What is here to stay, closed and unspoken, until spoken to. The zoo, a clue for you. The true no is now under clouds and an ink pen. Speak for the father of journeys of distant lands. The ring of fire is forever in my heart. I should go to sow a trend of sorts, to think that I am okay with so much failure. But what's that but someone's label on the table for me to sop up? Became a singer of sorts in here, and time for crime to sign the deal for fear of doing it again. Don't send me pies of your selfish lullabies. I know and still feel it's okay to bide my time up here, or across to over there, not scared of what tomorrow's song will bring, or if I drop a ping. This body is the inner map of the world in some way. Don't crack up or it will make up for all the longings of your slinging soul groping for her gears, and when she isn't there for over two decades of longing for a bone of vapor. Not me, not us, nowhere to fall, but to crawl and sink with the two steps required for progress in the previous episodal war of incomplete, discreet, his beat since the mountain is where it's at, only to be overcome by the Pacific Ocean. In times of renewing spirit, the flakes of light, I swear to God, are singing while those wings are beating, and swelling to mental enormity, outshining any morality that they always throw out at you. See the progress of myths distillate in the arcades of futurist day mirrors. Gilgamesh to bite-sized pirates fishing for treasure, immune to eternal life sprung trees guarded by the good snake. Super Bowl replaces Serpent Bowl of the Orphic Rite. Dido and Aeneas traded for arcade tickets. Sundor blasts from a singularity 13 billion years strong transmute into dizzy chicken pounce of a lifetime. A Tyrannosaurus Rex isn't painted these days, now and nearby lit up from behind taps of light blinking like so many guesses of these children's providence. Forty plus revolutions around Helios. Whacking mastodons of a polymer compound with mallets of mediocre dramas ironically capable for mass destruction the likes any Macedonian soldier has never seen. Man summer pass for fun and more. Walking dead MC, but get straight into the center of it. Brute ninjas, hard attack it, crack it, revolutionary. As snow cross drills on pills, of course. Sponsored nearby, toy soldier to an infinity blade effect before Trump sends him to the Middle East. Dark escape, 4D, anxiety, panic, terror, breakthrough, because the cycle never ends. We are ready, we are ready, we are ready to pump it up at 2013. Siesta on the ammo, credits 0, 0 to 1 to Sambo Speed Boom Mode Operation G H O S T to spin my wheel hard and treasure on 50, 25, 20, 50, 50, 30. Release power point to my troublesome war zone, but still. Jump, pump, stud, leaping for a thousand. The carnival has begun. This is a game of skill, not strength. Too soft, try it again. Ice to a crate of house, not for any sucker-minded mouse. Hammerhead, captain, hits at 48, high score 90. Hammer on the floor, dead. Supercars, dead, deep, big, buck, terminator, salvation. And the next door blows me a kiss. Space Invaders, winner's choice, she prefers Wizard of Oz. I'm dead inside, here, redeem chips and cards, dear. Experiences, the ultimate SpongeBob SquarePants Pineapple Arcade. Push the button to watch the token and go. Super Boots, welcome you, featuring cliffhangers. High struggle, one, two, three, three, two, one. Still, come on down. Blinko next, if the price is right. To my left, amplified eardrum, dancing for two. Tina, hitting often, and the breeze. Think you've got what it takes? So, step inside, choose the photographer. Select your template here. Nigel dances to your wandering heart. Be a star, bling, bling, dream, raider, typhoon. Come on, it's four dollars.
Snail. I'm your friend, and you can call me Sammy. It's been so long, so very long since I had someone to talk to. The kittens mewing all night long near crashing slushing waters. Serenade, formless, eternal, lapping tongues, baby spit, the equivalence to a christening of the void herself. The moon is a silvery yellow and dreaming the night glows from the aurora borealis, now forming showers above the glowing curtain, suspended time above all tents of men and home of beast, now silhouetted against this drilling sky lash winking at me, your humble servant, Sammy. This snail trusts you'll break brine bread with me and wipe my slimy sort of mouth with your jovial beard. Please take your hat off and respect my Mr. Nietzsche, the youngest professor head of philosophy at the university, not because he killed God, not because of his profound influences on civilization, not for his sexy mustache, no. For one day, as he was walking the streets of Turin, place of the shroud, he witnessed the lashing of a horse, so without hesitation he ran to her rescue. The great philosopher, poet, historian, dropped to the earth and transubstantiated into yours truly, a humble snail. Hmm. As we ate together of that brine bread, baked by the cardinal chef, the midget, in that momentous intoxicating moonlight, I chanced upon steering the dinghy of our conversation to abuse of fathers toward their sons. And if there is a meaning behind all those fairy tales where a peasant servant or farmhand, who really is a prince, is somehow forgotten about his true past, and meanwhile this evil king rules over the kingdom. Long story short, the boy was found in a haystack swaddling warm and cozy like by a milkmaid and adopted into the family. His real father, the good king, murdered by arsenic and his evil stepbrother taking the throne. Sammy and I debated the moral of the tale and Sammy threw in a twist. The boy is our body. The adopted brother king is our brain or ego consciousness. The boy is an extension of the whole world, kingdom, that began to experience itself through evolved consciousness peaking to mankind through sentience, or self-reflection. The ego usurps the rest of the world and tries to hold down our potential, and unless it is slain, like another motif being a greedy dragon, a higher calling and sense of self will not be attained. By countless trials and tests of strength and mental prowess, our hero has to peel away that conditional behavior which bred him to become a servant to his ego. As he slays gorgons, zombies, etc., he is really slaying the accumulated bullshit society and tradition heaped upon him. When the final trial is completed, our hero is left standing, right? His enemy slain. He is now king of his body, which is symbolic of the kingdom. You know? Sammy is one smoking hard snail.
Unless I'm still, there is a chance of being killed. I'm afraid to stand out because when I did before, it was out the door with all that fat cat sat on the mat stuff and being a Mr. Know-it-all when you don't have a girl to call makes me all numb. It's obvious that pain isn't the problem. Money is. Probing and drilling don't scare me. It's the chasm of empty space blinding me from the same fame as the common man. Mr. Normal. Norman. Being Mr. Normal with a mouthful of whites. No worries until your wife gets home. Did you get it yet? Those bills that claim your manhood stood in a mountain of brass, glass, formica, and Indian skulls. Still more older skulls and ruins on top of ruins that bury the dust of dinosaurs from the neighbor's dogs poking around for a patch of ground that resembles Eden for snails and birds. Rest assured the time is nigh when shifters will be shaders and sanders will be slanderers while tile will humble the new style because Aurelius ruled with an iron mind, a sober heart, and steady hand, albeit getting lost in someone else's land. Same old story, but is there a time when the makers of quicksands will forfeit their land taken from under sleeping dogs whose paws and jaws show a fight but can't get things right? Has his star fallen, drenched in the resins of hashish? Who sentences the dreamers of the soul to end this shame, as if opinions matter where romance with nature is measured by a reptile's gland? or a genetic stream of ignorance forging a course for its own against the dreamer's dripping quill. I'm feeling like the ageless journey. Sailing directionless and yet certain that Zeus is Jupiter, and afraid am I for the fury in his hair, and though Tiamat's tail split in splinters, dark matter swelled into the shimmering Milky Way. It's a Saturnine meal made of his children that tickles my brain, which Goya tells of an age where light is frozen in cold chills, the sleep of reason so treacherous still today, producing these monsters that crawl now the heights of our airliners, mimics Notre Dame's gargoyles, but giving them no stare. <laughs> I'm not saying war produces greatness in our hearts, spilling forth fire, although Francisco etches disasters of the same truths of glory. It's not chance for second and third of May, between the lakes, be celestially tied up in the lobster walking genius's exploits of an inner natural set. Our dreams are a second life. And taken by the austerity of frustration. That lobster loves serious creatures and know the secrets. Come underneath the season of a cyclone storm, 12,400 miles across the face of Jupiter, strolling. The old Lent King ruled for centuries, winding, turning, discerning the wastes, and searching for Cervantes' bones. There, outside of Madrid, and ten years before the death of the English spear, he crosses over in tears. Miguel sailing back to Spain made a captive by Algerian pirates, hails from outside of Madrid, lands in Rome, after a duel, hand injured, takes bullets in stride, he avoids nuptial formalities with a cardinal bride, buried in the nutrients of Holy Mother Earth, beneath speechless barefooted Trinitarians, my lost heart in his age is but a speck or a mote in the talented sky, earthbound, here, there, circling over 1,000 Earths, in stride of an anti-cyclonic eerie. What twist in history is there without Carl Sagan's sentiments? Is General Zauer the same as mine? I'm feeling like the ageless journey, sailing directionless, and yet certain that Zeus is Jupiter. And afraid am I, 
the theory his dream was our the same as mine I'm feeling like the agent's journey sailing directionless and yet certain that it seems to Jupiter and afraid am I for the theory in his hair and though Tiamat's tail is lit in splinters dark matter swelled into the shimmering milky way it's a saturnine tail made of his children that tickles my brain which Goya tells of an age where light is frozen in cold chills the sleep of reason so treacherous still today producing these monsters that crawl now the heights of our airliners mimics Notre Dame's gargoyles but giving them no stare. Sailing directionless and certain that this is Jupiter and afraid am I for the fury in his hair. And though Tiamat's tail is split into splinters dark matter swelled into the shimmering Milky Way. It's a Saturnine meal made of his children that tickles my brain. Which Goya tells of an age where light is frozen in cold chills. The sleep of reason so treacherous still today, producing these monsters that crawl now the heights of our airliners, mimics Notre Dame's gargoyles, but giving them no stare. Tragic moments spun in the eye of his hurricane For how long before it's all done? I chance speak of death Knowing not when mine is by and by Yet cannot be lied to by the logic of heads Where feet are none and gut is gone And so, leave the dreams to men Who dare to dream Alien moons and all too familiar lagoons and still I'm suspicious of that solitary white airplane hanging in the turquoise sky. Blast it! The gods lied to me again. I'm not the proctologist of her dreams. So forward, nasty pilgrims. The bleeding grooves in my brain are trenches of my ancestry. Electric drizzle stampedes the frequency of magnificent herds like buffalo moving across three states before the grid reaper took all magnificent sunsets. Winding down lonely trails out back, further back, and between a hill and a mountain, to land of faded dream. My moments of gladness are over there, not here. It's like an abandoned bird's nest, 
with just a few blue shells and a feather, turning in the hot breeze. Quest for certainty, strange of assurance in places of my heart, beneath the roof of my boyish brain. Basket of youth like bramble and twisted jigs, locking fingers of a tangled fairy tale gone south, to experiencing truth is layered bare for lost shirts from the sun's rays and cycles of solar silence before ramping it all up for another stock market crash. It's an ancient stone calendar, not Mayan, and that old farmer's almanac, once sleeping in giant grandma's attic now made into parking lots for autocratic motorbots unhinged from our delights of human rhymer the world today is a philip k dick special as we lose heart in the pilgrim's progress of mere serendipity to hoppity hippity up to the sergeant's shop and outfit the guns and the waves of sunsets all lined up like so many cars in that lot so many people lazing along infinity beach so many gravestones alone stands alone like petrified forests of forgotten magic whose legacy is compressed natural cathedral bone i think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old i think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old i think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old i think it's so cool to act like a fool, to keep from growing old. I think it's so cool to act like a fool. You know what I'm talking about. To keep from growing old. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's cool to act like a fool. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's cool to act like a fool. To keep from growing old. 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 I think it's so cool to act like a fool. To keep from growing old. I think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old. I think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old. I think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old. I think it's so cool, I think it's so cool to act like a fool to act like a fool to keep from growing old. To keep from growing old. I think it's so cool to act like a fool to keep from growing old. So toss me the three pointed hat with those bells at their ends. Bring me, pray, the striped jacket that goes with it. Hell, don't hold back on those bell tipped pointed shoes. <laughs> I know why you think lowly of me, what with your platinum shoes, the ones implanted in your genes, crest fallen of your deepest hearts as if behind a mountain of ice, chance gone for many a man who can only give you their attention. Not so fast in this century of post immediate toxic generation forgotten to take out the cat. Press here, you bastards, thinking you're all that in a Persian mat, but between you and me, this is an impossibility. So trust me, it's a reality. Yeah, trust me, 
It's no fantasy to grab on the cliff's edge, even though there's no chance in hell. It's the moments of time that construct our lives. Possibilities. It's a conclusion of hate that'll seal the fate of something unimagined. Winds. Wind on fire. It's dark in here. Close the hours to your sojourn's end and step with time. Keep sake in plans to fracture moments before dawn. After an uprising and upturning of your personal values by the accumulated avalanche of traditions pulled in her direction south, if it weren't for the beautiful spaces, I would not go, but forewarned of noxious nerve draggling the charm in your throat. Over there, if it's a song you break, the head is at the table next to the equestrian monument that's gonna go. Vines at the base and a swarm of bees comes out of the picnic basket, the larger one, and upon close inspection, these are not ordinary bees. No, for these bees are not bees at all, but hornets. How sound of wings confuse the crowd, as if they're all the same. But these are humming at a lower pitch, and their backs are painted each with a red skull. Is this a trick, product of chance? Are the patterns of the black widow any different? If my gaze is turned away, can I keep from being stung? Must I look to the crowd, where the clamor is thickest? Stand down, painter lest your paintbrush becomes a rifle without you even having time to reel from the oncoming noise. Sister Ellen, tell me a story or two. Sister Ellen, though shut up in your cloistered room, I know that you have a jewel for me. Can you tell me of Abelard's love, the one he had to let go? Eloise, unwed, was pregnant with child in the age of dawning chivalry. Some day to cut ties from your church. Please, Sister Ellen, don't keep your tales of love from me. It's unheard of this thing called love, the very same strummed by the troubadours of Arabia. My prayers and entreaties will I now send to Helicon, that place from which my words do flow. The ninefold throne of Apollo and the Camini. The ninefold throne of Apollo and the Camini. Hey, Sister Ellen, tell me a story or two. Sister Ellen, though shut up in your cloistered room, I know that you have a jewel for me. It's a strange and new light. Like a new birth in the night. Never before did this hand ever touch my face. Never did it enlighten my soul. Till now, oh wow. This glory of mine is more precious than African gold. So come now, tell me, sweet Ellen, of the ancient seashores so bold. From another age true and so strange that it's new. A blood-red orange pouring forth a nectar of purest heart and soul. Take me to the world's end, where the sun is baptized each night, forever and ever, until we all get it right. Please, Sister Rallies, don't Sister Rallies, don't Sister Rallies. Standing in the purple market, Briefcase in hand, handkerchief neatly displayed in pocket, Mr. Lacrimo is approaching the outer court of the subway. Many people crossing the street. The sky is partially broken, letting in a burst of sunlight. Clouds immediately overhead are darkest and moving rapidly. Sheets of rain off in the distance. A squad car whizzes by with temporary license plate, indicative of newest model testing. 
I shake Lacrimal's hand. He takes the wet glove off just prior, now fidgeting a useless prop. Cocker Spaniel brushes against me, collar with bunch of pig dandelions, as if to complement her moody eyes spark. There is anticipation of the lead speaker appearing tonight at the Court Pavilion Square. It's built according to the bioengineering systems of the esteemed architect Neil Sparman, associate to my friend Mr. Lacrimal. The headline speaker at the square is Thomas Estrada III, descended from the Cuban leader and first president. Estrada III is no diplomat, he's a genetic esthete and head GAP scientist. GAP, Genetic Aesthetic Principle, has been our model for tracing ancestry to the latent awareness zones of the world, which research of the past decade has led us to the important role which the spaces of the world serve for life to grow self-aware. Vacuum Predelicon software is partner with Estrada's research. The software mimics space-time regions of highly concentrated interference known as folding nothingness, which serves as the bedrock of self-organizing activity. In short, preference of space is the inception of living from non-living, the key word being preference. Coffee stand just ahead as we proceed in anticipation of tonight's talk. Mexican brew, 16 ounce. Americano, 16 ounce. Three cinnamon sticks, nothing else, thank you. The robot clerk drones out its orders while the personnel attendant shakes our hands. Her moving dress, a spin off of the haughty couture of Iris Van Herpen, being a revisited trendsetter these days. Since the first breakthrough in mainstream academia to confirm proto consciousness of all matter and the objectifying potential of a new math called the qualitative system, mainstreamers could trace psychosis and some other psychological maladies to our species relationship with the environment. This was also in part due to Mr. Estrada's research, but the kicker is now mathematics and psychology have joined forces, but not without the flexibility of qualitative systems math where it has been demonstrated that each number run through a programmed algorithm using QSM exhibits a personality. For instance, 4 expressed support and completeness. The number 4 is also dark, a black energy, an N which overlaps to completeness. Until recently, of course, this was completely ostracized by the scientific community as a cult or numerology. But the math doesn't lie, just as numbers cannot lie. The crowd began to thicken half a block from the entrance of the court pavilion square. No need for purchasing tickets, as the only existing currency for admittance was to engage in a conversation of the topics presented. This too being a byproduct of GAP's application to matters of state. Cars? None. Escalators are the norm to get around. Conveyor belts as walkways and roads can either get you to your destination or you can walk, as everything is relatively close. The conveyor belt roads are another story. These usually join neighboring cities. Magnetic souls are required as you are whisked to port. The skyline etched with many standing, sitting, and reclining against a box or suitcase. Circles of movies, sharing a meal, playing games, etc. On the fast roads, teens occupy the summers for hours sporting invented games. Cities at first needed complete makeovers, preceding the last economic crash felt worldwide. A blessing in disguise? Like Thomas Cole's Course of Empire, there is a pattern from humble beginnings toward a metropolis. But in every case, the rulers become fickle, edgy, ruthless. They wear their hearts on their sleeves. They are paranoid but wealthy. They work double time for personal gain, stifling rivals, leaving the great work to officials, paid off to silence until it's too late. Nations like the United States, Russia, China, countries in the Middle East, etc. were all connected by joint interests but remained blind to the greater good of higher consciousness and was to finally reap a hundred year old debt to the sanity of all Earth's life forms. It was time to evolve. 
As the inner circle of affairs, the government, was to implode, black marketers bought out legitimate corporations, including the patents, and made billions when money was still a thing. What was known but never addressed, all the world leaders were being hand-picked from behind the scenes by the real owners of the planet, the Invisible Hand. Decoys and shadow governments planted throughout media channels as if we were to discover them, unawares and posing as the Trilateral Commission, Illuminati, Bilderberg, Rothschild, Medici, Jesuits, all puppets like the President of the United States. The real worlders were a tribe of cosmetic drug lords, echoing the most ruthless bands from Sicily. Just as Bugs Malone had transformed the Nevada desert into a metropolis, our entire world was strategically hijacked at the turn of the 18th century from the hands of both the royalty and the Catholic Church by the world's most wealthy money lenders. These Futurists Brigadus Arabonum, future puppet kings, built up the world's metropolises only to be reeled in by the highest royalty, church, world government, world bank, and mega corporation, together forming a synarchy whose most outer form decoys targeted by conspiracy made it possible for massive undercurrent zoning of a future invisible hand rising. All this from the 20th century to the 22nd when major secret psychological, digital, and neurological research was being funded by the invisible hand to engineer the most powerful strain of drug which in turn can be used to control the world, echoing two other very effective devices, religion and crowd psychology, used by the United States in the 20th century when the CPI, Committee on Public Information, hired Edward Bernays, the man who invented psychological warfare. The IH developed programmable neural cells, which mimicked real brain cells. These were then let into the world's water supply. The drugs were made into two types. Type A, its effects would induce ecstasy as it would target the pleasure zones of the brain. Type B, its effects would produce a dependency on authority and fear of revolt. The former was easily detected and eventually was stopped. However, Type B is more subtle and easily masked and since everyone was exposed, there can never be a world freed from its effects. Life is pleasant anyway, and who wants war and strife? The first generation of us who are blessed with something far more elegant and promising than Jinistan or Thomas More's Utopia got fat and lethargic real fast. Unbelievable. Reason brought us this world, and reason ushered in a generation of emotional pussies to a point where not one of Sergio Leone's movies was permitted, and Clint Eastwood banned. What's worse is how they grew fast to slander one another for an extra hour of weightlessness in the neural chambers that housed less than one millionth of the population at a time. It was like a scene out of the Old Testament with people clawing the walls of the Ark. The IH merely had to stand back and watch. Now back to the show. It's time to celebrate the unchangeable quadrant of this tapestric age. Unfurled by the silent surgeons, the invisible hand. But wait, a butterfly got caught in the soup as the gurgling sounds of a midget data king swung open the doors of this holy sacramental arena peopled by Mr. Estrada and friends. The butterfly was a hologram sent from another time prior to the drugs and the whores and the contagious genetic conditions of the selfish gene amplified. And now it found its way up the speaker's nose. The rainbow-haired Thomas spoke. If there were no unanswerable questions regarding the nature of our existence and the mysteries that still await us, we would cease to be. Gasps from the water and air as distillate of so many neurons from the audience's lips. If anything less than an eternal void stretching beyond all knowable systems was all that enveloped our cosmos, there would no cosmos be. Silence. You're not too sure about me, are you? Still enshrouded in conflicts of interest, like being a stake jabbed into the thigh of the west coast, but mistaken for a signpost. You look about at your feet and hands asking for coats and hats to avoid being caught in the rain. 
more fictitious plots masticizing into pterodactyls posing as an F-14 Tomcat about as accurate as you are going to find me. Don't be shy. Come in. Stay. Certain. For hopeless sake. Picking clouds like roses and I'm thinking of you under cover of morning confessions brought on by the wakening light. I shut out the pointer of meta and fate to pumping hearts influenced by coursing fluids and bodies and brains, canals of warmth, cool in obscurities, the depth of our hearts, let in no terrestrial glow. If you stand still, feel the motion of your stillness, the pulleys and levers of your psyche will dislodge minds from old peers, which are really pit stops for the lost. What is more tragic and dumbfounding than what's old? But what is a train of new peers stretching along our group conscious shoreline, waiting like monsters of prey to devour our infinite potential? Now sacrificing yourself is purposed here, yet to choose wisely the ports should honor your craft. What to die for, whether in a small compact bit of time or a drawn out stretch of time, is nothing less than of grave importance. As you course through this maze of life, replete with so many choices committing to this or that thing, you may discover the ultimate truth of the relationship of you and your environment. As you address your body as my body and your mind as my mind, you will also address your environment as my environment. Even here, you see the inextricable connection. Only at the outset of your little death, while still conscious, will you achieve the truth. Obligatory love is a tragedy.